It is October 1st, which means I'm gonna start my Halloween dress now. Here is the plan, which I left on vacation, but I did remember to take a picture of it. So let's get started. I mean, it's also dressed for the occasion. I had to change because it may be October, but it is 80 something degrees out and rising. So now we have more weather appropriate shirt. I don't have any patterns with the high enough collar and the princess seams that I'm looking for, so I'm gonna draft my own and then go jump in the lake, probably. <laughs> it's really hot in here. I draped a more sheath dress shape instead of my usual twirly skirt because a lot of my creations are starting to look the same. I made a few adjustments to my mock-up and also there's a leg slit. I drew out the spooky spiderweb collar design on the pattern, complete with cute spider. I can scan this and digitize the embroidery around the shape of the actual pattern. And then I took my new half a kayak for a paddle around the fall colors. I hooped up some black satin with black stabilizer and after realizing that this was upside down, I redid it with temporary spray adhesive. I know what I'm doing. I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but this is not white thread, although it looks like it now. It's actually glow-in-the-dark thread. This thread is kind of cheap and it breaks a lot, so it works best if you sew with a slow speed. While the spider was weaving her web, I started making Emmy's dress, which is a jack-o'-lantern. Jack-o'-lanterns are my favorite design to carve on a pumpkin. What's yours? Although I feel like carving pumpkins is a very American thing, though. Is it? I wanted some spooky shoes to go with this, so I dyed some dirty wedding shoes a very dark gray. I feel like I should be saying bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. And I have to say, this worked way better than I'd expected. Next day, I cut out the dress pieces, lining the center front panel up with the embroidery. Everything else will be cut on folded fabric. Also, I'm adding more length to the skirt. I ironed everything to be nice and flat, including the cotton lining, but I don't think cotton was the right choice for lining such as tight dress. Something slippery would probably have been better. I pinned everything together, starting at the waistline, which couldn't be done without Emmy's help. I think you'll find that all sewing here needs Emmy's help. I pressed my seams to the back using a tailor's ham for the curvy parts. So here is the spider web that I intended to make, but I just noticed there's a spider web up there. Time for another intentional spider web. And since this is not flat, I'm doing this one myself. I set my machine to satin stitch and followed the outline myself in the same glowing thread. So last year, I tried to grow my own pumpkins, but failed horribly. But this year, I have three mini pumpkins, one gourd, and three pumpkins, which is way better than last year. Although I don't think that one is going to be ready to carve by Halloween, but two definitely should. I'm pretty excited. Yesterday, I filmed the reveal and photo shoot of my Jasmine slash Rapunzel mashup. Hi, Amy girl. Which is doing a lot better online than my last mashup, which someone just said, it's not a mashup, you just did it wrong. I'm like, that's great. But uh, people will seem to be loving it, which is excellent. Not that that was gonna stop me from doing what I wanted anyways, but today, if you're here, <laughs> it's pouring outside. So I'm going to clean up this mess and get back to working on the spider web dress. Also, the rain today is why I did the photo shoot yesterday. I got out my chalk hem marker and trimmed an even hem. I did an Instagram poll last night about whether Emmy's dress needed green trim on the top or not, and the vote was yes, so I'm going to sew some trim on this dress and it will be done. You can just feel the excitement over there. I have a whole video and free pattern on making dog dresses here. I had to use stabilizer on the back of the satin stitching to keep the fabric from puckering, so I trimmed the extra off. While it was still flat, I added one last web on the back shoulder. I sewed the shoulders of the dress and pinned the outside and the lining right sides together at the neckline and hem, leaving the back and armholes open, but going up and down the slit.
I clipped the neck curve before understitching the seam allowance to the lining and ironing it flat. I ironed the bottom hem flat too. I marked where the zipper will end and sewed below that on the fashion fabric and the lining fabric. I feel like I should make a spider joke here about weaving my web, but I actually used to weave, so it's not really a joke. Okay, I did this wrong on my last regular dress, but I want the zipper to go low enough past my waist that I can get into it, which was the problem with my dress in a day dress. Uh, but it's not quite long enough to go the whole way up, so I'm going to stitch here uh, on the inside so it's a nice finished edge here. And then I'm just gonna add a little button and a loop to the top part. So there's gonna be like two or three inches that are not sewn up there. Here's an invisible zipper hack for you. If you actually read the instructions, it says to iron each side of the zipper flat. How many years of sewing until I actually read those instructions? More than I'm willing to admit to. My actual invisible zipper hack is to hand baste the zipper in before machine sewing it as it keeps things from moving around under the foot, even with an invisible zipper foot. I hand stitched the lining to the zipper with an interesting view. She's a happy girl. And see, all sewing needs Emmy's help. To finish the armholes, I cut 1 inch wide bias tape, although 1.5 probably would have been easier, and stitch it to the outside of the armholes. I clipped the curves and folded the bias tape twice to the inside, covering all raw edges. Not that you can see it here with the black on black. I hand stitched this just to the lining fabric. The dress is done, minus I still have to find a button for the back. I don't know if I have any black buttons. Besides that, <laughs> it's all done. And next is the cauldron. But first, I have a whiny lump who needs something. And it was time for a jet ski ride. She's very spoiled. I caved yesterday and just went to Joanne's because I don't think I have any black buttons. I know I have some white ones somewhere, but I couldn't find anything. I cut a bit of black elastic cord and pin it to the inside. I should have put this in here, but I'm just gonna top stitch it because I do not feel like taking this whole thing apart. I hand stitched the button on the other side. And I just had one small thing before it was all done. Uh, uh oh. Okay, try to. Oh, come on. Third try is the charm, right? My accessory for this dress is not Emmy the pumpkin, but a cauldron purse. I did some quick math and made up a six panel pattern. Uh, also, I have this small piece of skull fabric that I got as a remnant last year from Joann's and I did an Instagram poll about what I should make with it. And most people said a corset or a top and I really don't feel like making a corset so I think I'm gonna make a top out of this. Okay, my mock-up went really well. So I'm gonna cut it from this now. This being a thin vinyl-ish material, and I went through a lot of struggles to find out that I was not up for the challenge of sewing with it. Okay, well, just, just gonna do some magic here. You ready? Ta-da! No, that was not enough magic. The quick version? I sewed all the panels together, failed at top stitching the seam allowance, hated the shape, so I scrapped it and changed the shape. All right, new plan. I have some very stiff interfacing, and I use some heat and bond to attach some satin to it. And it's much more my style of sewing, so. I heat and bonded the interfacing, trimmed around it, and bonded it to the satin. Well, I tried. Hmm. The heat didn't go through the interfacing, so I had to iron it from the reverse side. And let's just see how many fails I can cram into one mini project, shall we? I mistakenly ironed one on upside down. So, guess I'm gonna make a new ironing board cover. This is not gonna come off. I cut them out again with added seam allowance and pinned everything together. Again. What's creating without messing up a few times? I stitched just along the edge of the interfacing for all six panels. I made a mitten. <laughs> I struggled to turn this right side out. The interfacing is really doing its job. This can take a minute. Eventually I got it done, but it was a struggle. I have no idea how to iron these because I can't get anything in here, so I think I'm just gonna not. The cauldron edge was a bit too tall, so I trimmed it. Since I forgot to add the bottom before turning it right sides out, I ironed a circle of interfacing the size of the bottom hole to more satin, basted the edges down, and did a small whip stitch to attach it. I didn't have any neon green for the lining, so I'm making a purple potion. But I'm still going to make it bubble, bubble, toil, and trouble. 
And before you comment, I know that was a misquote, but I'm literally painting bubbles onto a witch's potion. I pinned all six panels together and stitched them all together. I left a gap on one side to turn it right side out later. And I also added the bottom. Now to make the drawstring closure for more potion bubbles. I'm gonna stitch here, gap here, stitch here. I folded it in half. I'm gonna stitch a tunnel for a drawstring just below that. I fed some rope in with a safety pin, which I later dyed purple. I'm trying to figure out how to layer this properly. Also, this is the bottom of the cauldron. I need this to be sandwiched in here, so it goes this one. This went on for a while before I remembered that I had to add the strap first. I really need to clean up my sewing room. I'll get on that eventually, probably. I cut a long strip and sewed it into a tube and shoved the interfacing inside with the same safety pin from earlier. I should probably acquire a few more. Okay, I'm gonna try and stitch the straps on here. What just happened? I have the, uh oh. Ah, uh, this project is just, it's a disaster. I need pliers. Oh, hi, Amy. I lost the pin head. I don't know where it went. But I do keep pliers in my sewing kit. This is not really why. It occurs to me that I probably could have designed this better instead of having to cantilever my sewing machine off of a cliff. Time to sew! And use pliers again. Dramatic sigh. This is rapidly turning into a cursed project, so I... I'm just gonna hand sew this closed. Is this a good idea? Probably not. This was an ugly but effective seam. It took a while, but I didn't have to wrangle it under the presser foot again. Just gonna imply that there's some magic happening and it'll be done. I also added some purple rhinestones as potion dripping down the sides. I like a little sparkle in my life. Turns out I had a lot fewer purple rhinestones than I was expecting. And we're ready for the Halloween party. If you enjoyed this video then hit the like button and subscribe to see what I make next. You don't want to miss it. I just walked through an actual spider web. This is my doc ghost. Okay.